Okay, so mostly we're gonna go over part D here, but I do wanna just quickly talk about A, B, and C. So A was first, uh, find the acceleration of the particle. We just do that on our calculator, do the derivative of uh, this equation, and then afterwards at time two, hit control enter. And then B says, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing? Um, really it only says increasing, but you know we can kind of do both. So, uh, for this one, we need to compare the sign. So I'm going to say that this sign was greater than zero. Then I'm going to just do the velocity at time two. That was negative. So I'm going to say it's less than zero. You need to write this down. You cannot just type it into your calculator. You need to have that number and that number to get credit. Okay. If you did not write those numbers down, you don't get credit. So since it said is the speed increasing, I guess we could have said no. The speed of the particle is decreasing at time two because the velocity is negative and the acceleration is positive. But again, Saying just that is not enough. You need to also have those numbers. All right, part B, find all times when the particle changes direction. Whenever we see that word changes direction, we're setting V of T equal to zero. So if they gave us position, we'll take the derivative and set the derivative equal to zero. But since they gave us V of T, we just set it initially to zero. So we're gonna set it equal to zero. Now, I wanna point this out. If you just type in the line like this, you're gonna get this weird like N2 whatever thing. Um, Whenever you get an N2, N1, and any number, you wanna remember what that means is, oh yeah, I have to use my interval. So we're not gonna type it in just like that. We're gonna type it in at zero less than T less than three. You don't have to retype it all, just go back up, highlight it, hit enter, and then outside of the parentheses, it's always after the parentheses, be careful about that. After the parentheses of the solve, add that interval. So at zero less than T less than three, and that'll give you the, the points within the interval. Okay, then we're gonna make our number line and we're gonna plug in. We already plugged in two, so you don't have to replug it in. We know it's negative here. So plug in something bigger than 2.5. I did 2.8, I got a positive. And so we would say the particle changes direction at time 2.5 because the velocity changes signs. You need to have both this explanation and this number line. And you need to, oops, you need to label your number line. Okay, label your number line as V. All right, part C. Find the total distance, that's just the formula. Whenever we see total distance, we just use our formula. So the formula is the integral from zero to three of the absolute value of V of T dt, and you get 4.3338, uh, pretty easy. Now part D, this is the one I really wanna focus on, and this is gonna be asking for the greatest. When we see the word greatest, we're thinking maximum or minimum. So immediately I see greatest, I'm thinking maximum or minimum. And when I see an interval, now I know it's that absolute maximum or minimum. Okay, so absolute maximum or minimum. And I want the greatest distance between the particle and the origin. So this particle and the origin, that's a little bit funky. But, you know, when we think about the word position, position means how far, basically to the left or to the right, from the origin, right? And when we think of the word distance, we think of kind of like the total movement. Um, this is neither one of those, it's kind of weird. So distance, you know, must be positive, right? But if I say the distance between the particle and the origin, what that means is, you know, if here's our origin at zero, if my particle was over here at like one, two, three, four, this distance, the position would be positive four. If my particle is here at you know, negative five, right, the position would be negative five. But what's the distance from the origin is just five. What's the distance from the origin is just four. So this distance between the particle and the origin, what this actually is talking about is it's talking about just the position, but make it positive. So take the absolute value of the position. But we're doing this at the end, it's not the distance formula. It's a little bit confusing, it's not the distance formula. So I've only seen them ask this, this was the 2003 exam, I've only seen them use this wording once or twice, but you know they're just asking us, can we kind of figure out what that wording means? They only awarded two points for this question. Uh, this one, surprisingly, I don't know how, but part C, they literally gave you three points. It was like one point, 
one point, one point for the endpoints, one point for the inside, one point for that. Um, so that was a huge question. I think they kind of felt that maybe this wording was really confusing, so they only gave it two points. So anyways, um, what we are going to do here is anytime we have that absolute maximum, absolute minimum thing, our first step is to always uh, take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Now, that is the derivative. V of t already is the derivative because we're finding the maximum position. Right now, it's not really position, but you know, distance from the origin. So we already did this. We already did 2.5066. And so then we're going to make a table. We always make a table for these absolute maximums. So we put in our endpoints and our critical points. And now this distance from the origin, again, we're just kind of feeling that this is the position. It's the position, but it's positive. So the position at zero they gave us was one. To get the position at 2.5066, we're gonna just use our formula. One plus the integral from zero to 2.5066 of V of T DT. So I typed this into my calculator for us already, and I got one plus that integral, negative 2.2655. Then we would do the same thing for x of 3, it would be 1 plus the integral from 0 to 3 of v of t dt. It is important that you write these down, right, so that the grader knows how you're getting these answers. And so then we're going to just pop up here, we can just hit enter and just change our uh, 2.5066 to a 3, hit control enter, hit negative 1.197. But what's going to happen is that the distance from the origin is just going to turn those numbers positive. So the furthest it's ever away from the origin is at this point. So at you know x equals 2.5066, the particle is 2.2655 from the origin. We don't put units because they did not give us units. Right, this sentence would make more sense with units like 2.26 feet or meters or inches, but they didn't give it, so we don't report it. So that's kind of how that one works. I know it's a little bit weird. I'm not really expecting that that will be on our exam. I think it's much more likely that they would just say, um, you know, what is the greatest position? Or, you know, what is when is the particle the furthest to the right or the furthest to the left, right? Where you, um, you know, just do the position and don't have to worry about that last step of making it positive. All right, but that's kind of how that one worked. Um, I have seen like one answer key that used this, what they did that kind of made sense as well, is they just did time and then they did position and then they did distance from the origin. And this might make more sense to you. So what they did is they kind of did our same normal starting 2.5066 and three. So we got one, we had negative 2.2655, and we had negative one point, I should have gone out to four decimals, um, 1971. And then I just said, okay, well the distance from the origin, we're just gonna turn those positive. And so then, right, had they said maximum position, it would have been one. Right, but they said maximum distance from the origin, so it's that guy. So hopefully that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this, but uh, I think that should help us out, and I will see you guys in class.